What's up everyone, welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name's Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So today we're going over a welding setup or my welding table setup. I've had a lot of people ask questions about just how I do it. Let's get right down to it. All right guys, so we'll go over a little tour here of the welding setup. So this is uh, basically a culmination of a lot of different ideas and just things that I've pieced together over the years on what worked for me. So uh, let's start down here. Uh, of course, my stick welder, the Thunderbolt XL. I got this on Craigslist for a hundred bucks um, and I just replaced the leads uh electro electrode holder i put it on a on a cart here this is just a metal dolly Let me get my jacket off here i put it on a metal cart and uh, just made it a little bit more mobile and uh, put some you know some hooks on here for my leads and it's overall been a great machine for me so i truly believe that some brands do stuff better than others uh, i really really believe in the lincoln tombstone but this thunderbolt has done me well um, i am just a hobbyist so i don't use it all that much but um, i used it to build this entire cart so this cart is two by two uh, steel tubing that i got from the scrap yard uh, you can see places like this that were bent before and i literally just scabbed these in where i could so you know, me being a hobbyist, my welds aren't perfect, but, uh, you know, I'm getting there. My stick welding still needs a lot of work. Obviously, MIG, um, you can pretty much well be a genius um, and not have to put a lot of effort into it. So, uh, going through here, of course, got your fire extinguisher for safety. I usually have safety glasses hung here uh, if I'm grinding. Um, I've put in a receptacle here, wired it to an extension cord so I can run this somewhere else in the shop and plug it in and I can plug my grinders in straight here on the cart. So I really like that option. Now, I, in hindsight, I should have put the shelf a lot lower um, so I could stack more stuff on the shelf, but this basically keeps it organized. Um, I have my seven inch DeWalt grinder. I think the only the only company that does a DeWalt grinder the best is, or a, a seven inch grinder the best is DeWalt. Um, I have the smaller four and a half jobbies in here. I've got a DeWalt and a Bosch. And then I've got my hypotherm plasma cutter. Um, it sits here on the shelf. And then, uh, you know, I don't have to remove it from the shelf. I literally just plug it in and plug my air into the back of it and it's ready to rock and roll. I don't have to move that. Gloves, blanket, just in case. Uh, my metal cutting circular saw, I believe Milwaukee does the best when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, metal cutting circular saw. I've got my seven inch discs and everything uh, here on the side. I basically just took a piece of rebar and welded it in at an angle so that you can put your stuff on here and organize it. Um, just, just basically spacing it out as I went. Really not that hard of a project. So... The tabletop, I decided to do extruded steel on this side for torch cutting. Um, of course, if I'm cutting with the torch, I take this stuff off the shelf. And so I have the ability to you know, cut anything I want with the torch here. And then this is kind of my welding table. So this is raw steel. Um, this is, uh, I think this is quarter inch thick plate. Um, also from the scrap yard, this project did not cost a lot of money. I literally just torched it uh, off and grinded it smooth and then just welded it to the frame of the bench. So you can see, you know, I welded it in a couple different places. All the, all the frame underneath is just angle iron and then I, I cut it. I basically mitered it and then, and then welded it in. Um, but I kept this raw steel. Um, this is uh, basically um, coated with oil. So you get it super hot with the torch or the rosebud, and then you wipe it with oil. Um, you get it too hot and the oil will start on fire, but um, you wipe it with oil and it keeps it sealed and keeps it from rusting. 
uh, but you can still have your electrode. Um, I did. I do a magnet clamp on here, and then I can have my my uh, my piece, whatever I'm working on. I just got done doing the uh, chainsaw uh, holder. I'll roll in a picture of that here. But when you set it on this surface, it creates the you know the path of electricity so that you can weld it any shape or form and just have it sitting on here however you need it. You don't need to worry about where your clamp is, where what, what you're doing or how it's oriented, and it just is all that much more convenient. So I love welding like that instead of you know the traditional old uh, clamp style. Um, here's a clamp for you. Um, you know, trying to position the clamp, trying to get it setting right, then the wire's hanging on it. I just love to go with that setup. So then I have my C clamps here just on, um, you know, regular rebar like I did before. Now the casters, the casters might be something that I revisit in the future. These are plastic casters with rubber, rubberized, you know, coating around the outside. They hold the weight pretty well. I used to have my uh, Arbor Press on here. It was a it was a dake. Uh, it weighed like 300 pounds, and these casters took it fine. I I had it laying up here and bolted to this, uh, but I figured I didn't use it enough, so I got rid of it. Um, but the casters held that just fine. So th these casters aren't bad. I would just like to go to maybe an air-filled uh, pneumatic tire or something like that. The Miller 180 or the Miller Matic 180 for. Uh, you Miller snobs, um, a setup that I really, really love. I don't use the auto set on it. I, uh, I prefer to do it the old, old school way and, you know, adjust it myself. This has been a pretty darn good welder to me. The first welder that I actually bought new uh, on a cheap cart that I've modified and made it work for how I wanted it. Um, it just basically needs to move around the shop and be able to be put into you know, put into place beside my welding table. Everything's mobile mobile, so that I can just roll it outside and I can work on it outside the garage or I can move it around in here. I just enjoy having everything mobile and you can move this around. Um, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, uh, this is the Milwaukee, or the, sorry, not the Milwaukee. Man, what was I thinking? This is a box, Boss uh, Helmet by Jackson, uh, fully electronic. I really love this helmet. Um, it's a little heavy, but I really like it for a hobbyist. I'm not really worried about the weight. Um, I just want it to be effective. So I love the options on this for grinding and torch settings, stuff like that. Uh, makes it really easy to set up those kind of things. So, and then of course I I rock a Miller uh, leather jacket. I got a deal on, so it's all a matter of what I get deals on, and what I can do on the cheap. Because in the end, I'm just a hobbyist. I'm not a professional. I don't weld all day, and I'm certainly not a pipe fitter. Uh, my welds aren't inspection ready. So this is my setup for you know around here where I need to get things done. So. All right, guys, I hope that you got a general gist of things of just how I operate. So if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. It's time to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into. And I guess if you subscribe to the channel, we'll see you in the next video.